اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم عن فاطمة الزهراء عليها السلام بنت رسول الله أنها قالت دخل عليها برسول الله في بعض الأيام فقال السلام عليك يا فاطمة فقلت عليك السلام قال إني أجد في بدني زعفا فقلت له إذك بالله يا عبتاه من الزوف فقال يا فاطمة ويتيني بالكساء اليماني فغطيني به فأتيت بالكساء اليماني فغطيت به وسرت أنظر إليه إذا وجهه يتلاله كأنه البدر في ليلة تمامي وكمالي فما كان ذل ساعة وإذا بولدي الحسن قد أكمل وقال السلام عليك يا أمه فقلت عليك السلام يا قرة عيني وسمرة فوادي فقال يا أمه إني أش من دك راية تيبا كأنها راية جدي رسول الله فقلت نام إن جدك تهت الكساء فأكبل لسنونه والكساء وقال السلام عليك يا جده يا رسول الله أتاذنني أن أذق لا ما كاتت الكساء فقال عليك السلام يا ولدي ويا صاحب عوضك دذنت لك فدك لا ما هو تهت الكساء فما كان ذل ساعة وإذا بولدي الحسين قد أكمل وقال السلام عليك يا أمه فقلت عليك السلام يا ولدي ويا قرة عيني وثمرة فوادي فقال لي يا أمه إني عش من دك راية تيبا كأن حراية جدي رسول الله فقلت نام إن جدك وأقاك تهت الكساء فدنا الحسين نحو الكساء وقال السلام عليك يا جده السلام عليك يا من اقتار الله أتاذنني أن أكون ماكما تهت الكساء فقال عليك السلام يا ولدي ويا شاف أمتي قد ذنت لك فذا كلامهما تهت الكساء فأكبل عند ذلك أبا الحسن علي بن عبي طالب وقال السلام عليك يا بنت رسول الله فقلت عليك السلام يا عبا الحسن ويا أمير المؤمنين فقال يا فاطمة إني أش من دك راية تيبا كأنها راية أخي وابن عمي رسول الله فقلت نام ها وما ولديك تهت الكساء فأكبل علي نهو الكساء وقال السلام عليك يا رسول الله أتاذن لي أن أكون ماكم تهت الكساء فقال عليك السلام يا أخي ويا وسي 
وخليفتي وصاحب لبائك دذنت لك فدخل علي تهت الكساء ثم عتيت نهو الكساء وقلت السلام عليك يا عبتا يا رسول الله أتاذنني أن أكون ما كنت تلكسا فقال هو عليك السلام يا بنتي ويا بضعتي قد ذنت لك فدقلت تهت الكساء فلما اكتملنا جميعا تهت الكساء عكذا عبي رسول الله بطرف الكساء وعما بيد اليمنى إلى السماء وقال اللهم إن هؤلاء أهل بيتي وخاصتي وهامتي لحمهم لحمي ودمهم دمي يؤلمني ما يؤلمنيهم ويحذنني ما يحذنهم أنا حرم لمن هاربهم وسلم لمن سالمهم وعدو لمن عاداهم ومحب لمن أحبهم إنهم مني وأنا منهم فاجعل سلواتك وبركاتك ورحمتك وغفرانك ورضوانك علي وعليهم وعزم عنهم الرجس وتحرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد فقال الله عز وجل يا ملائكتي ويا سكان السماوات إني ما خلقت سماء مبنيا ولا عرضا مدهيا ولا قمرا منيرا ولا شمسا مضيا ولا فلكا يدور ولا بحرا يجري ولا فلكا يسي إلا في محبة هؤلاء الخمسة الذين هم تهت الكساء فقال عمين جبرائيل يا ربي ومن تهت الكساء فقال عز وجل هم أهل بيت النبوة وما دين الرسالة هم فاطمة وابوها وبالها وبنوها اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد فقال جبرائيل يا ربي أتاذن أحبت إلى الأرض ليكون ما هم سادسا فقال الله نعم قد ذنت لك فهبت العمين جبرائيل وقال السلام عليك يا رسول الله العلي العلا يكرهك السلام ويقصك بالتهية والإكرام ويكون لك وعزتي وجلالي إني ما خلقت سماء مبنيا ولا عرضا مدحيا ولا كمرا منيرا ولا شمسا مضيا ولا فلكا يدور ولا بحرا يجري ولا فلكا يسي إلا لأجلكم ومحبتكم وقد عدل ليدخل ماكم فعل تاذن يا رسول الله فقال رسول الله وعليك السلام يا عمين وحي الله إنه نام قد ذنت لك فدك لا جبرائيل ما ناتهت الكساء فقال بإن الله قد أوهى إليكم يقول إنما يريد الله ليذحب عنكم الرجس على البيت ويطحركم تطهيرا 
اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد فقال علي نبي يا رسول الله اخبر لي ما لجلوسنا هذا تحت الكساء من الفضل عند الله فقال النبي صلى الله عليه واله والذي بعثني بالحق نبيا واستفاني بالرساله نجيا ما ذكر قبرنا هذا في مافل من محافل اهل الارض وفيه جمع من شيعتنا ومحبينا الا ونزلت عليهم الرحمه وافت بهم الملائكه واستغفرت لهم لا يتفرقوا فقال علي عليه السلام اذا والله فدنا وفاد شيعتنا ورب الكعبه فقال ابي رسول الله صلى الله عليه واله يا علي والذي باسني بلك نبيه واستفاني بالرساله نجيه ما ذكر قبرنا هذا في مافل من محافل اهل العرض وفيه جمع من شيعتنا ومحبينا وفيهم محموم الا وفرج الله حما ولا مغموم الا وقشف الله غما ولا طالب حاجه الا وقضى الله حاجته فقال علي عليه السلام اذا والله فزنا وسعدنا وكذلك شيعتنا فادوا وسعدوا في الدنيا والآخرة ورب الكعبة اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد سورة المباركة الفاتحة اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سيد شبير كرماني ريسبكتد ايلدرز برادرز اند سيسترز السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سير فاتز ريكوستد فور ذا سالا سواب اوف ذا مرحومين لستد اون ذا سكرين اند فور اول مرحومين الفاتحه Ayamun Yujibu is requested for the names listed on the screen and for all those in need here and elsewhere. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Amman Yujibu al-Mustarida da'ahu yakshifu su'a. Amman Yujibu al-Mustarida da'ahu yakshifu su'a. أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه يكشف سوء أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه يكشف سوء أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه يكشف سوء Join a committee. Volunteering opportunities are available at Masjid al-Hay as our annual open invitation to all community members and especially the committee leaders and members to discuss and renew their commitment to their respective committees. Please refer to the email sent last week with more information. We look forward to seeing, you, seeing our community members sign up. Muharram Suffer Fund. The months of Muharram and Safar are approaching, and as with previous years, we plan to have niyaz for all 12 nights, including Ashura day, as well as the significant nights throughout the two months. 
We request all who will be attending the masjid or watching the lectures online to make a donation towards these programs. Any amount is welcome. To make a contribution, please contact Brother Murtaza Kareem or Sister Batul Muki. Parents Workshop Join Wise Academy on Wednesday, August 4th, as Brother Hussein Sharara shares the concept of the five love languages and how to get your child to respond to parental guidance without resentment. In this insightful and interactive workshop, you will learn through role-playing and open conversations with other parents. Gain practical and proven tips on how to understand your child's emotional needs by speaking their love language. The program starts at 6 p.m. with dinner and the interactive session begins at 6.30 p.m. Activities for kids ages 4 to 8 will be available and all parents are welcome. Interactive Thursday night program. On Thursday, August 5th, our guest speaker, Brother Hussein Sharara, will share practical lessons from the life of Imam Hussein alayhi salam to understand the formula of his mission to effectively, to effectively create a new reality for yourself. As a follow-up to the session held the last week, Brother Hussein Sharara will lead another meditation on Thursday, August 5th, after the main program. If you missed the previous meditation, don't miss out on experiencing a guided meditation where you will tune into new realities to help overcome your own limitations. Adopt a Park Cleanup Please join us as we visit our adopted park, Lee P. Moore Park, for our next visit on Sunday, August 8th. This will be a quarterly commitment to maintain and clean it in the name of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. We will be meeting there from 9.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. To register, please go to the website shown on the screen. Elementary School Scholarships The WISE Academy is excited to announce a new donor-funded grant which offers full and partial scholarships for eligible students enrolling in grades 1 to 5 for the 2021-2022 school year. For more information, email or call us using the information on the screen. At this time, I would like to invite Sayyid Shabir Kermani to come inside tonight's madlis with a loud salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فوض أمر إلى الله إن الله بسير بالعباد ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل ونعم المولى ونعم النصير والصلاة والسلام والتحية والإكرام على الرسول المسدد المصطفى الأمجد المحمود الأحمد الذي سمي في الصماء بأحمد وفي الأرض بأبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى أهل بيت الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين المنتجبين الذين أظهب الله أنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى وقل رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتاب الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فمن حاجك فيه من بعد ما جاءك من العلم فقل تعالوا ندعو أبناءنا وأبناءكم ونساءنا ونساءكم وأنفسنا وأنفسكم ثم نبتهل فنجعل لعنة الله على الكاظبين صدق الله العلي العظيم زين مجالسكم بالصلوات على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد My respected elders, brothers and sisters in Iman, here in Florida and across the globe, wherever you're hearing my voice, Salamun alaikum alaykum jameean wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Question, what is the power of truth? Keep that question in the back of your mind, inshallah, we will return to it. We are commemorating a momentous occasion before us, and I want to begin this conversation by understanding what is it that is the power of truth? And what are the lessons that we derive from truth? In commemorating the Mubahila that we are commemorating tonight, there are some valuable lessons that you and I get. There are some valuable lessons that you and I derive from this conversation and the commemoration of this event. 
And what are those principles? Such as, what is the power of, for example, interfaith and dialogue between people of different backgrounds, people of different religions, people of different faiths, and people of different views? What's the power of that, number one? Number two, we're going to look at this idea or this concept with respect to the power of truth. How powerful is the truth? And why is it so important in our lives? Number three, how are the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam the role models that are the Ahlul Bayt, how are they timeless? How are they central within Islam? How are they central within the teachings of Islam? And how are they guides and role models for us throughout times? And how does that connect to point number two? That is the concept of truth. Then we're going to get to the idea of Mubahila. What is it that happened on Mubahila? And what events took place? And also within this conversation will be the idea, what is the connection between Mubahila and Hadith Kisa that was just recited so beautifully? What lessons do we derive from that connection between these two? particular events. And finally, why are the Ahlul Bayt so important? Especially as we approach the nights and the ayam of Adha of Sayyidul Shuhada and Muharram. This is our agenda for the brief moments that we have together, wherever you are, here in Florida or across the globe. From the bottom of your heart, send us salawat on Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. At the first level, I want to actually discuss what is it that we are commemorating. There's a few things that fall on this particular eve and these particular days that are very important for us to note. And it's Mubahila is the main thing, but there's other things that we should consider. For example, what? We are told that the verse with respect to Inna waliukum Allah wa Rasul wa ladina aman wa ladina yuqimuna salah wa yutuna zakah wa hum raqiyun. The verse where Imam Amir al Mu'minin he gives his ring in in terms of zakat while he's in a state of ruku. That verse was revealed in particular at this particular moment in time on the 24th of Dhul Hijjah, according to riwayat and narrations. You see that ring that Amir al Mu'minin gave in a state of ruku. What ring was that? According to the ulama, it was not an ordinary ring. First of all, there's many lessons to learn from this, where Amir al-Mu'mineen is in a state of ruku, and a sail, a person who's asking, comes to the mosque, and he asks one person, and one after the other, and he calls out, is there anyone to help me, anyone to assist me? No one responds. And then this same person who's asking calls out. Of course, it was a test, as, as you know. I don't have time to go into the details. But he's calling out at that point in time that, Oh Allah, bear witness that I'm leaving your house. That is a mosque. I'm leaving the house of God. Asking for something and I'm leaving empty-handed. When at that time, Amir al-Mu'mineen gestures. While in salah, he gestures and he indicates, Take my ring. Now, the question comes forward, was Amir al-Mu'mineen focusing on his salah or was he focusing on what was being said? It's a question. There's two answers to this, at least. Number one, in terms of if I am praying or you are praying, is it that I don't hear someone at all whatsoever? No, we have in narration and we have in the, in the hadith that even if someone says salam to you, you are to repeat what they said exactly as they say it, for example. It is part of that, even if you're praying. So that means you must hear it, otherwise you can't do that, right? Number one. Number two, the ulama, they go to another in terms of analysis of Amin al-Mu'mini and Ali ibn Abi Talib. They say Ali is too high. That when the sa'il, they reject this first view. That is, that's true for you and I that we heard, we can still hear while we're praying. Because we're here. But Amir al mumin they say Amir al mumin is different. Why? Because when the sail or the person was asking, asked the first time, Amir al mumin would have responded if that was the case about hearing. No. Second time he would have responded. Third time he would have responded if that was the case of just hearing. No. The ulama say that it wasn't until he, this person addressed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and said, Oh Allah, bear witness that I am leaving your mosque empty-handed, that the mi'raj of Ali ibn Abi Talib, because we have narrations, as-salah mi'raj al-mu'min, that the prayer is the mi'raj of the believer. That means that Amir al-Mu'min was not on the ground. He was, physically he was, but in terms of his thoughts, he was with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Allah's realm. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had indicated to him to give this in his, in khairat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad But what did he give? That ring was not an ordinary ring. Do you know what ring that was? That was the ring of Sulaiman. Sulaiman used to run his entire kingdom through that ring that Allah had given him. All of the kingdom of Sulaiman is in the power of that ring, and that ring becomes the khairat of my Mawla Amir al-Mu'mineen. Who is Amir al-Mu'mineen? 
This happens on this particular night according to narrations on the 24th of Dhul Hijjah. One thing that we are commemorating tonight that is very important. Another thing that we are commemorating tonight is the Hadith al Kisa that was really beautifully recited. Hadith al Kisa, according to some narrations, was revealed on the 24th of Dhul Hijjah, which we'll come to momentarily. Number one. Also, it's possible, according to ulama, that Hadith al Kisa was revealed a few times, more than once, especially in particular Ayat Tathir, the Ayah of Tathir that we recite in it, that was revealed multiple times. In fact, Rasulullah, for six months when the Ayah of Tathir was revealed, he would go to the house of Fatima al-Zahra and he would say, As-salamu alayka ya ahla bayt al And he would recite Ayat Tathir. But nonetheless, Hadith Kisa is considered to be re- revealed on this particular occasion. The third event is Mubahila, which you and I are commemorating tonight, which we'll get to momentarily. And the fourth is not today, but tomorrow, according to ulama. What is that? Tomorrow is that special day, the 25th, where Surah Dahar was revealed. Surah Hal Ata Al Al Insani, Haina Min Al Dahri Lam Yakun, Shayam Mazukura, Wayut Aymun Al Ta'ama Ala Hubbihi Miskina, Wayatima Wa Asira. That the verses, according to all Muslims, Shia Sunni does not matter, this chapter at least. For some, the ones who have some staunchness, they say at least only the first 18. Other Muslims say the entire chapter. Of course, for us it's very clear. Surah Dahar, also known as Surah Insan, was revealed for the Ahlul Bayt and no one else. It's absolutely crystal clear. This was also revealed, not tonight, but tomorrow, according to the 25th of Dhul Hijjah. So there are so many things that are coming together before us for you and I to commemorate in this night. And I hope that you take these messages home because it's interesting that this happens. Allah has lined up Ghadir and Mubahila right before Muharram. That He's reminding us, it's as if Allah is reminding us, don't forget these personalities, don't forget these individuals. And how quickly the world forgot and what happened in Karbala occurred. Now, a few things that I want to mention with respect to our topic at the second level, the second point. What do we learn from Mubahila? This discussion that took place which ultimately led to a debate and an an entity withdrawing from the debate. What do we learn from it? Number one, some principles come forward. What is the power of truth? That's something for us to consider. In every age, in every time, in every, every time, every space, every zaman, every makan, the truth has a power. We may not be able to measure it today. We may not be able to judge its weight. We may not be able to establish its length. We may not be able to physically analyze the truth. But believe me, the truth has a power. And if we learn anything from Mubahila, we learn the power of truth. Not only in the event of Mubahila, but the truth with these personalities that are the Ahlul Bayt. What do I mean? Because the verse of Mubahila that I recited at the beginning, فَمَنْ حَاجَكَ فِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ فَقُلْ تَعَالُوا نَدْعُوا أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَنِسَاءَنَا وَنِسَاءَكُمْ وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ As you all know, the verse says, Bring on to them after, after what has been revealed and the ilm, the knowledge that you have brought, this is something, if time permits, I would like to analyze. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say ilm with respect to Rasulullah? Because some people said Rasulullah is just a messenger. He has no value. Nahasha lillah. Even some Muslims said, he's just conveying, nothing else. But Allah is saying, no, the ilm that we gave you, Ya Rasulullah, if they don't accept that even, then tell them. Faqul ta'alu. Then come. Bring your, and then, فَثُمَّ نَبْتَهِلْ فَنَجْعَلْ لَعَنَةُ اللَّهِ لِلْكَاذِبِينَ But before that, bring yourselves, your sons, and we'll bring our sons. Bring your women, we'll bring our women. Bring yourselves, your nafs, and we'll bring our nafs. أَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ What's interesting in this, is in the Arabic language, there is singular duality, that is two, and there's three or more. In each of these tenses, that is with respect to the Sons, with respect to the women, and with respect to the selves, all three have been used. Now here's the point. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there was a lot of space in the ayah for us to be able to say, for someone to say, for Rasulullah to say, that for, for example, for my sons, I'll bring many people. For example, for my women, I'll bring many people. He could have brought all of his wives. For his nafs, he could have brought a lot of people. But the principle that remains here in Arabia at that time, in Islam, there were many honest people that were living in Medina at that time. For example, Abu Dhar. Rasulullah himself said, Abu Dhar, there is nobody who has been, the sky has not sat above anyone 
more truthful than Abu Dhar. But Abu Dhar was not invited. That is the principle that is here, that even if out of a thousand times, if someone 999 times is honest and truthful, but maybe once they gave a white lie, I'm not saying Abu Dhar did it, but some person, anybody in Arabia, they would not be able to fit in this ayah. Please stay with me on this. Remember in Christianity, when Jesus was crucified, we don't believe he was crucified. He was lifted to the heavens according to our narrations. Allah protected him and he preserved him. But in Christianity, Jesus was crucified and they pelted him with stones. The famous, the Bible says the famous, according to the Christian belief, the famous line, let he who has not sinned cast the first stone. That means the one who has not done any guna, any ma'asiya themselves should be the person who throws the first stone. That means all of those people were sinners there who cast the stone towards Jesus. The same way in Islamic history, read the history of Islam. When, uh, not my history, read al Farooq, read the books that have been written by Ahlul Sunnah scholar Shibli Nomani. He says that when the second Khalifa's son was caught drinking alcohol, not my words, the words of historians of Ahlul Sunnah, when he was caught drinking alcohol and they said, you are to be punished, his own father came to lash him. And he said, the one who lashes me should be the one who has never drank alcohol themselves in their life. He said, you can't do it, my father. That means the principle that we get from, from this ayah is that the Ahlul Bayt are those who in day and night and every moment they are honest. Abu Dhar was honest, Salman was honest, all those people were at a very high level. But this ayah is telling us that the Ahlul Bayt are at a maqam, the Panjitan are at a manzilat, which no other individual on this planet is at. No one could have come in place of these personalities, these five, Holy Kisa, Ahlul Kisa. And that's the principle and the power of truth that which we'll come to in a moment. That the people who were on the opposition side, even though they were not Muslims, they said the famous historical line that we are seeing faces, such faces, that if they tell the mountain to move, the mountain would move. They're not Muslims. The question I asked the Muslim world, how is the non-Muslim, the Christian able to tell the truth of these people? But you're not able to tell? What is the truth of the Ahlul Bayt? The power of this truth is that the truth speaks, whether we listen or we hear or we not, or we don't. The first thing. The third level. What is the power and what lessons does this Mubahila teach us about interfaith dialogue? It's a very important discussion, especially in our modern world. You see, Sometimes we think mubahila is just a moment to give la'na on one side versus the other. No. Remember, the discussion started, it started and it began with a dialogue and a discussion to try to understand each other. And one side wanted to say, this is what we believe, the other side answered. But ultimately, when there was not a reconciliation, this is what emerged. A principle that we learn from the life of Rasulullah is, at every moment Rasulullah tried to deal with matters, peacefully and through communication. Whether it was Sulih Hudaybiyah, whether it was peace treaty after, after peace treaty, it was only when violations occurred that Rasulullah resorted to, not Rasulullah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Rasulullah resorted to, for example, warfare or other things. The same thing happened here. One of the most important things for you and I today in our modern world is to build bridges with that same community that Rasulullah at the end which we'll find the, the, the people of Najran, they ultimately agreed to what Rasulullah said and they lived on good terms afterwards. It was not as if they were living in terms of fighting each other consistently. The principle we learn is that we should build bridges with other faiths and we should dialogue with them. We may not always agree the same way that Rasulullah didn't agree with the people of Najran, but the same way we should try to attempt to build bridges as much as possible. Because the Qur'an itself says that you will find that the closest people to you are Christians. Because they have monks who are soft-hearted. Isn't it true that sometimes in Muslim, us as Muslims, we cannot find friends amongst other Muslims? I'm talking about Muslim world. But sometimes you find that people of other faiths, and the Qur'an tells us which faith in particular, Christianity, that you will find friends amongst them. The question which remains in our world where we've been facing Islamophobia for the last 
decade or two, the most important, statistically, the one way that you can cut and I can cut Islamophobia in half, 50% decrease or drop, is what? By just knowing one non-Muslim. Most people who hate Islam don't know a Muslim. That tells you everything you need to know. That means we should build these bridges. So for example, when Eid al-Adha came, when for example, Ghadir comes, when for example, Mubahila comes, or any of the happy occasions come, we should share with our friends, our neighbors, our classmates, who are not Muslim in our happiness. If that means taking cookies and donuts, or if you want to be healthier, take your pick to work or school, or maybe with Zoom, you send it digitally, whatever you want to do. But make sure it's known and make sure you share in that happiness. Do not, for example, when it's Christmas time, don't others share in their happiness, for example, or other holidays. Similarly, the principle we should do here is that I want us to understand Mubahila in terms of Rasulullah's relationship with other religions. Some people, and this is very important because some people say Rasulullah was fighting every other religion and he forced people to become Muslim. If Rasulullah had forced people to become Muslim, he would have had the people of Najran butchered. He would have had them killed. He would have fought them. He didn't. He used words and dialogue. So this is a principle that comes forward to us. We should learn from the seerah of Rasulullah. Now, Finally, I want to come what happened at the event of Mubahila and what lessons can you and I learn from this to implement in our own lives. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. According to the narrations, the people of Najran, the Christians of Najran came to visit Rasulullah. Najran, according to ulama, is either in Yemen or Egypt. There's a debate because you will find the name of the town in Yemen and also in Egypt. It's a name. For example, you'll find, uh, for example, York. York, you find York in England, you find York in many different places. So that it's a name. But according to ulama, either Yemen or Egypt, they came from this place. You know, till this day in Egypt, you find Christians, the Coptic Christians and others. So they came. When they came to visit Rasulullah, according to the narrations, they came in very expensive attire. They came in very decked out attire, as we would call it. The clothing that they were, they were wearing was very expensive and some say it was lined with gold and it was something that the Arabs had not seen. The Arabs at that time wore simple clothes. They didn't wear very expensive. It was only when Banu Umayyah came and Banu Abbas came and they saw how the Byzantines and the Romans and others lived that they began to wear all these extravagant things. They were simple at that time. So they come to the mosque. When they come to the mosque, they enter wearing these robes and these expensive attire and they come to the vicinity of Rasulullah. Rasulullah, according to the narration, he doesn't pay them any attention. He doesn't give them any attention. He doesn't even speak to them. They're trying to ask some questions. Imagine someone comes from out of town. They're thinking that we're going to meet the messenger. They're asking who's Muhammad first of all. The narration says who, was, who is Muhammad. They couldn't tell. They say the simplicity of Rasulullah was such that they were like which one, who is Muhammad here? Because he was so simple. Of course, if they looked a little bit closer, they would know Rasulullah. And according later on, they found out. It will come soon. Nonetheless, when they went to him, they said, this must be him. When they got to him, they wanted to speak. Rasulullah didn't speak. Then they went out. They said, what's going on here? The narration says it wasn't until they met Imam Ali who said, what's your issue? What's your problem? Because the issue of ilm will always be solved either by the city of knowledge or the door of the city of knowledge. Amir al-Mu'mineen comes forward. What's, your, what's the matter? He says, we are Christians. We've come from Najran. Of course, Amir al mumin knows, but he's telling you and I. We've come from Najran. We have some questions for Muhammad, the messenger, or your messenger. He said, but he won't speak to us. What's the issue? What's the matter? He says, you went dressed like this? He said, yes, we went dressed like this. He said, look, Rasulullah is a simple person. Islam is a, is a religion of equality. It does not favor wealth, and it does not favor pomp, and it does not favor someone being wearing such audacious clothing and such luxurious clothing. So, Susha, what shall we do? He said, look, Islam came to even the playing field. The thing that attracted people to Islam, the common person, and till this day attracts many non-Muslims till this day, the convert community or the revert community, is the egalitarian nature of Islam. That nobody is better. No white is better than black. Black is not better than white. Everyone is equal. Which Malcolm X said when he went to Hajj and he saw true unity. That is what brought people. So Amir al-Mumin says, look, 
change your expensive clothes and wear simple clothes. When you go and meet him now, then he will be receptive to meeting you. So they went, they changed their robes or they removed the expensive things and they wore the simple clothes that they had underneath and they went towards Rasulullah. And then they greeted Rasulullah and then Rasulullah greeted them and then they had the conversation that ensued. They had a few discussions, they had a few things that they wanted to ask about. And then there were some conversations that ensued back. But the big issue that they were saying that was that Isa alayhi salam, Jesus peace be upon him, is the son of God. Of course, we don't accept this, Islam doesn't accept this. We believe he was a prophet of God, but by no means the son of God. Even many Christians believe that Isa, Jesus peace be upon him, never said he was the son of God. He, the Bible always says, the father in heaven is greater than I, for example, referring to God. And we've talked much about how the concept of father uh, and son came about. Nonetheless, another time inshallah. So they were saying that we believe that Jesus is the, is the son of God and there's a relationship. And at that point in time, the Quran revealed and Rasulullah answered them at that point in time. Inna mathal Isa indallah ka mathal Adam. Thumma khalaqahu min turabin, thumma qala lahu kunfa yakun. At that point in time, the verse came forward that the issue of Isa near Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the same as Adam. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him with clay, said be, and it was. But the answer came forward here, that if you believe that Isa is the son of God, because he does not have a father, and he was born through an immaculate birth, which we agree that he was born through an immaculate birth, then the one who is more worthy to be God, according to you, or the son of God is Adam, because he did not have a father and he did not have a mother. Both. You know, I remember I was in undergrad uh, and I was doing a paper in my mythology class. Mythology is the history of religions and, and beliefs of past civilizations. And I remember I, I, I actually mentioned Surah Maryam in my class. And the professor, at the end of the day, was astonished and said that, you know, I've been teaching this class for 20 years and I never knew that the immaculate birth, which we believe that Mary conceived Jesus, is also mentioned in the Quran. And Muslims also believe it. I never knew that. I asked a question afterwards to the professor. I said, look, is it, do you feel that after teaching this class for so many years, do you feel, you know, it's a university. It's, a, it's not a, theolo- a seminary. It's not, you're not teaching theology here. Does this bring you closer to God or further away? The answer was interesting. The professor said, every year I get closer to God. So I said, why? The professor came back and said, all of these religions taught me a unity that you're telling me that the story of Maryam or Mary as we call her is in the is in the Quran whereas we believe it in the Bible or for example in the Old Testament or in the Torah and these things that are these patterns that I find these individuals or these communities did not have ways of communicating with one another many of them were in a different zaman and a different makan a different time and different space that means there was some divine hand that was guiding them. As you know, Islam believes in the truth of Christianity in its original form and Judaism in its original form. That it's been changed, that's a different matter. But that uniformity, and many times when we say Judeo-Christian in our modern world, we should be saying Judeo-Christian Islamic. Because it's like two siblings and they have a third sibling, you never mentioned the third sibling. Nonetheless, at that point in time when this ensued, Rasulullah said, this is the answer. Adam is more worthy based on your logic of being called the son of God than Isa. Although we respect Isa. They said, we don't agree. And they went about their ways. And then finally the verse came. After there was no agreement between the two. فَمَنْ حَاجَّكَ فِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ فَقُلْ تَعَالُوا نَدْعُوا أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَنِسَاءَنَا وَنِسَاءَكُمْ وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ Here's where it gets interesting. According to the narrations, Rasulullah, when the verse came, that if after the knowledge has been brought and they don't accept, then do mubahila and do a dua for the revocation and revoking of mercy after that. And when this verse came, because there was no reconciliation, so the conversation ensued that bring your sons, we'll bring our sons. You bring your women, we'll bring our women. You bring your nafs, yourselves, we'll bring ourselves. 
At that point in time, when this verse emerged, Rasulullah told Salman, according to the narration, Salman, Al-Farsi or Salman al-Muhammadi, that there's a particular location that's still there today, that is a mosque which is called, uh, uh, which was where Mubahala was to take place. It was outside of Medina. The Ahlul Bayt were going to go the next day. And when this was set up, Rasulullah said to Salman, go to this mosque, or what became a mosque, and put down what we would call a red carpet. Take a carpet that's red, put it down, and the Ahlul Bayt were going to be there. That was going to happen the next day, when Mubahila was going to occur the next day. At that point in time, when did Mubahila happen? According to the ulama, the Mubahila happened, Rasulullah set the time right after Fajr. Why right after Fajr? Because the ulama comment on this. They say right after Fajr is slightly dark, slightly light. There's just enough light to see who are the people. And it's just dark enough to make sure that there is hijab. Hijab for who? Sayyidatul Nisa al Alameen, Fatima al Zahra. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted that she go out, but at the same time she is preserved. That they know it's Fatima, but they do not see even the shadow of Fatima al Zahra. So this occurred. But here's the interesting thing that I wanted to mention that I said at the offset. The relationship between Mubahila and hadith kisa according to the ulama and some ulama, as I mentioned, ayat that's here may have been revealed a few times. But according to ulama, that Rasulullah said on day one, Mubahila is tomorrow, and in the morning before they went out for the Mubahila is when hadith kisa was revealed. That means, on the day of Mubahila is also, according to some ulama, hadith kisa as well. Where Rasulullah, he says to his daughter, he says, O oh, Fatima, I am feeling a laugh, what we would call a laugh, a sort of a, a cold sensation over myself. Bring for me a kisa, a cloak. At that point in time, Fatima the Zahra brings the cloak. And in it, then Hassan and Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein come. And then they enter into the cloak. And then Amir al muminin comes. As you know, we've been reciting Hadith kisa for so many years. And then Amir al muminin says, I smell the fragrance of Rasulullah. And then he enters into the cloak. And then Fatima the Zahra enters into the cloak. At that point in time, Rasulullah, he covers all of them. And then he says the magnanimous lines that you and I recite. So this gives us a window into the immaculateness of the Panjitan, the five immaculate ones. Then after they emerge, and then they go forward. When they go forward, according to the narrations, when they're leaving, according to the narrations, at that point in time, Rasulullah is at the front. At the back is Amir al-Mu'mineen. Rasulullah, in his hands, he's carrying Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And in his hand, on the ground, who's walking with him is Imam Hassan alayhi salam. And behind him is Fatima al-Zahra, salam Allah alayha. And behind her is Amir al-Mu'mineen. And the ulama say, it was as if Rasulullah was taking one step and Fatima the Zahra would step on the same step as Rasulullah. And after Fatima the Zahra would step on the step of Rasulullah, Amir al muminin would step on the step of Fatima the Zahra to cover her tracks. So that the world, the hijab of Fatima was such that the world did not even know the footprints of Fatima the Zahra. This was the position and the sanctity of Fatima the Zahra. But there's another meaning. That Fatima the Zahra is the centrality. She is the one who is the protector of prophethood and imamat. Allahu Akbar. Allahumma You may say I'm exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating. The ulama are saying this. Why? Because when Rasulullah, when they used to throw the filth of animals on Rasulullah when he was praying by the Kaaba, Abu Jahl and the likes, no Muslim in the early days came to defend Rasulullah because they knew if they came to defend Rasulullah, they would be killed. The only person was a young girl who, Bavahir was a girl, but it was Fatima the Zahra said that the Nisa al was defending Rasulullah. She would clean off the wounds when he would come back from Tabligh from Ta'if, Fatima the Zahra. And this same Fatima the Zahra is defending Amir al muminin Imamat, in the court of the oppressors and the Zalimin. It's not a joke that Imam Askari says, We the Imams are a hujja on the people. And Fatima the Zahra, our grandmother Fatima the Zahra is a hujja on us. Allahumma <laughs> 
Never forget, my dear brothers and sisters, Ayatullah Najafi Mar'ashi says, never forget in the qunut. With time, I don't recite it here, but I remind you to recite it. In private, I always do and I recommend you do. He says in his Ayatullah Najafi Mar'ashi, is that marja or that scholar who dedicated his life to books. His whole life was books. He used to take loans from his students. Usually scholars did give money to their students. He used to eat the leftover peel of melons so that he could save money to buy and preserve books. The largest library in Asia after China's building one, but the current largest library in, I, in Asia is the Najafi Marashi Library, where Ayatollah Najafi Marashi is buried. He wrote a will to his son, one public, one private. In that, 25 points in the public wasiya will, three separate points relate to Fatima the Zahra. He says, my son, never forget the tasbih of Fatima the Zahra. Not only after salah, he said it will help you in the most difficult times, never forget it. Fatima the Zahra. Who is Fatima the Zahra? What is the maqam of Fatima the Zahra? Number two, he says, make sure you never forget the khutbah of Fadakiya, the khutbah of Fadak that Fatima the Zahra gave. He says, some of the biggest intellectuals of the Arabic language have neglected the khutbah of Fadakiya. He said, you know, the, uh, the people who used to migrate, particularly the Sadat and others as well, they used to make sure if they left Arabia because of persecution, they went to Iran, they left to leave due to persecution, then they went to India or other places, part of their idea, identity, they would make sure that their children had memorized the khutbah of Fadakiyah by heart. No matter where they went, they would make sure that at least they know that. Because the identity was tied to that. So he says, never forget khutbah of Fadakiyah. And number three, Ayatollah Najafi Mar'ashi says, never forget in the qunut of your salat to say, bihaqqi Fatima wa abiha wa ba'liha wa baniha wa sirr al mustawdi'a fiha. Antu salli ala Muhammadin wa ala tahirin. Salli ala Muhammadin wa ala That, oh Allah, by Fatima and her father and her husband and her sons and the secret with which she is buried. Grant me my haja. That secret will be known on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. When the cry will be heard, Ya Ahla Mahshar Ghuddu Absarakum. O people of the court of the day of judgment, lower your gaze. For Fatima enters into the court. That secret is not known. It's a secret. But there's a power in that secret. Nonetheless, Fatima, Amir al muminin Rasulullah, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, they go. And when they proceed towards the Christians of Najran or that locality that Rasulullah said, put down the red carpet, there were four priests who were the high priests of the Christians who were looking from the distance. They said, look, if Muhammad tomorrow, if he brings his companions, then we will debate him and then we will do mubahila. But if he does not bring his companions and he brings his family, there is no way we will debate. We will not do mubahila. Because he has so much honor and truthfulness and trust that he is willing to put his family on the line. You know, that makes it clear that Imam Hussein alayhi salam, when he went to Karbala, he took his family. Why? A person, if they have one shadow of a doubt that they're on the wrong, they won't take their family. Rasulullah had no doubt in the fakhr of Rasulullah, that is Imam Hussein had no doubt whatsoever. So he said, look, this is the situation. Subhanallah. The Christians were able to tell there's a difference between the Ashab and the Al. But the Muslim world is still not able to tell till this day. He said, if they bring the companions, then we'll debate. At that point in time, when he saw, the high priest saw that these five individuals are coming, he said, look, we are seeing such faces that if they tell the mountain to move, the mountain will move. If you do mubahila with them, you will be cursed and your lineages after will be cursed. Don't do mubahila with them. They came before Rasulullah, they said, look, we don't want to do mubahila. We accept the terms. We will pay the tax and we will follow. But here's the important lesson. Rasulullah did not impose on them that you must become Muslim. Look at the tolerance of Rasulullah. Rasulullah said, you can remain Christian, you follow your church, you have your church, you go to your church, you worship in your church, you follow your belief system, to you, your religion, to us, our religion. What a lesson to those Muslim countries that in this day and age, they still don't allow churches to be built in their countries. Have you understood what Islam is? 
Islam is about tolerance. Islam is not about imposing. Islam was based on this foundation that we get from Rasulullah. He says, very well, you pay the jizya, you pay the tax, you have freedom. The same way during the reign and the rule of Amir al-Mu'mineen, four years, nine months, Amir al-Mu'mineen had Christians and Jews and other faiths that were living under the jurisdiction of the Islamic empire. Islam doesn't say that you behead people. Those were those people who came after Rasulullah who began to butcher people. Yes, that is the history of Muslims, but that's not the history of Islam. There's a difference. Some Muslim rulers committed atrocities. That's a fact. After Rasulullah. But that's not how Rasulullah operated. Rasulullah, my prophet and your prophet is that individual that when a POW, a prisoner of war, would come to the Muslim side, he would say that you are a non-Muslim. You are free to go if you simply teach a few Muslims how to read and write. Ya Rasulullah, is that person teaching fiqh, usul, tawheed, adala, nabuwa, imama, qiyama to this Muslim? That POW? He doesn't even know Islam. He's not a Muslim. Rasulullah said, doesn't matter. That's the importance of ilm in my eyes. In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's eyes. The downfall of Islam occurred historically when so-called scholars made a differentiation between Islamic knowledge and un-Islamic knowledge. That's when the decline happened. This is Islamic ilm and this is non-Islamic. In Islam, ilm is only two kinds. Qurbatan illallah or not. It either takes you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or takes you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That biology book that I'm teaching and I'm learning in my class, the physics book, the chemistry book, that is also ibadah. If it takes me to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what's caused the problem. We think in our modern world that religion is to come to mosque, to go to church, to go to, for example, the temple. In Islam, what religion is, is when you wake up in the morning, when you go to sleep at night, and even sleep at night is worship. No moment of your life is separate, and my life is separated from ibadah. The narrations are very clear in front of us, is it not? That the one, for example, who does wudu and goes to sleep, the one who recites Surah Qul three times and goes to sleep, for example, and the likes. The principle, and I'm concluding here. The big lesson that you and I need to take away from Mubahila is this, the power of truth. The Christians of Najran were able to tell that these people hold haq. Hold fast to the Ahlul Bayt. It will benefit you in this world, especially and in the hereafter. There are no role models like the Ahlul Bayt. The truth of the Ahlul Bayt, the sincerity of the Ahlul Bayt, is that guiding light that will guide you in the darkest hour. In every time. You may be here today, you may go somewhere else and live somewhere else. My youth especially. Never let go of the Ahlul Bayt. They will help you in their most difficult time. Sare shari ke bazme kisate mahaz par Tha hukme kibriya ka takaza mubahila Tha hukme kibriya ka takaza mubahila Or wo to nisa o kum ke liye a gai batool Wo to nisa o kum ke liye a gai batool Varna to jeet sakti thi fizza mubahila Wo to nisa o kum ke liye a gai batool The verse said nisa o kum therefore Fatimah al-Zahra came Otherwise fizza could have won mubahila And if Surah Dahir teaches us anything It's the maqam of the Ahlul Bayt and the servants of the Ahlul Bayt Understand and enlighten your hearts with these individuals and these personalities. This is apparently the last Eid before Ayyam-i Aza. Don't forget the connection to the Ahlul Bayt. 
and insha'Allah, your ayam aza will be ibadah, the way this suggestion is ibadah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless this holy gathering. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our ibadah and the zikr of Ali Muhammad. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to gain an insight in the ma'rif of the Ahlul Bayt. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to gain some insight into hadith kisa and the miracle and the power of hadith kisa. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to get a glimpse into the miraculous nature of mubahila and the lessons of interfaith dialogue, the lessons of truth, the lessons of sincerity and overcoming and victory that we learn from Mubahila. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, anyone who's ill in this night, grant them shifa in this night. And Ya Allah, anyone who's suffering from any difficulty, financial, health, otherwise, Ya Allah, by the Panjitan, by the Ahlul Bayt, grant them shifa in this night. And Ya Allah, hasten the reappearance of Imam Sahib al Rasul Zaman and allow us to be amongst his companions when he returns. Wa akhirud da'wan and alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. At first, on this uh, auspicious and divine occasion of Eid al I'd like to extend my heartiest and happy uh, Eid al to all of you. Uh, I would like to recite a few lines, a few verses, and I hope and pray that I can convey uh, the essence of this uh, beautiful poetry. Yali, 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 Yali. Tu Ali ki karta hai hum sari Tu Ali ki karta hai hum sari Ye tere zameer ki bhool hai Ye tere zameer ki bhool hai Tujh mein Ali ki vila nahi Tujh mein Ali ki vila nahi Tere zindagi bhi fazool hai Tu Ali ki karta hai hum sari Wo Ali jamal hai innama Wo Ali jo hasil kul kafa Wo Ali jamal hai innama Wo Ali jo hasil kul kafa Usse kya kahun tu khud bata Chal tujh pe chhoda ye faisla Jisse حق نے بخشا ہو مرتبہ جسے حق نے بخشا ہو مرتبہ جسے حق نے بخشا ہو مرتبہ اور جو ازل سے شوہر بطول ہے جہاں جاگتا تو امام ہے جہاں جاگتا تو امام ہے جہاں سو گیا تو رسول ہے تو علی کی کرتا ہے ہم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم Now these, uh, the next few verses are associated with Hazrat Mesa Metamar. Ye jo kar raha hai tu saktiyan Ye jo kar raha hai tu saktiyan Mere pyaar ka hai ye imtihan یہ جو کر رہا ہے تو ساختیاں میرے پیار کا ہے یہ امتحان تجھے تخت پر بھی سکو نہیں مجھے دار پر بھی ملی اما میں ادو کو کیوں نہ ادو کہوں میں ادو کو کیوں نہ ادو کہوں میری زندگی کا حصول ہے اور مروں تو لب پہ ہو یا علی اور مروں تو لب پہ ہو یا علی مجھے ایسا مرنا قبول ہے یا علی 
तू अलीक करता है हम सरी सलवाद हमद वाल मोहम्मद सलवाद Our brother and sister, assalamu alaikum. Uh, we'll recite a small manajat of uh, Bibi Fatima, inshallah. I will need your help. And Amar is helping me anyway, so inshallah you guys can all recite together with me. Muhammad wa ala Muhammad salawat. Ya Fatima Zahara Ya Fatima Zahara Ya Fatima Zahara All together please Ya Fatima Zahara Ya Fatima Zahara Ya Fatima Zahara Chur wahdo hume gham se yahi Vahakt karam hai Ya Fatima Zahara, tumhe bacho ki kasam hai Churwa do hume gham se yehi vahakt karam hai Ya Fatima Zahara, tumhe bacho ki kasam hai Ya Fatima Zahara, Ya Fatima Zahara Ya Fatima Zahara Aulad ki neymat se mehroom jamaye Be shiri ke jule pe wa karti hai duaye Ummid karam aap ka hi baab karam hai Ya Fatima Zahara, tumhe bacho ki kasam hai Ya Fatima Zahara, Ya Fatima Zahara Ya Fatima Zahara Har ranj o bala dur rahe hai jahi fariyat Shahbir ke matam ke liye wo rahe abad Abbas alamdar ka jis ghar pe alam hai Ya Fatima Zahara tumhe bacho ki kasam hai Ya Fatima Zahara Ya Fatima Zahara Ya Fatima Zahara Ya Fatima Rizwan malaik hai pale aap ke dar se Kyun band hai moumin bhala phir rizq ko tar se Haatim ka nahi yeh to dar e shah e umam hai Ya Fatima Zahara, tumhe bacho ki kasam hai Ya Fatima Zahara, Ya Fatima Zahara Ya Fatima Zahara Sajjad ke sad ke usse ahazad kara de Sughra ke tasadduk usse apno se mila de Mohmin jo koi ke din me be jurm se tam hai Ya Fatima Zahara tumhe bacho ki kasam hai Dena hai mujhe aap ko shabir ka pursa Bihi bihi mujhe jaldi se bula lije madina 
देना है मुझे आपको शहबीर कपूर सा बिही भी मुझे जल्दी से बुला लीजे मदीना सांसें ये बताती है कि अभी वक्त भी कम है या फात मजहरा तुम्हें बच्चों की कसम है मेहदी से लहद आपकी देखी नहीं जाती अभी परिदय गए बत से उन्हें भेज दो बीबी ये मेरी दुआओं में दुआ सबसे अहम है या फात मजहरा तुम्हें बच्चों की कसम है छुरवा दो हमें गम से यही वक्त करम है या फात मजहरा तुम्हें बच्चों की कसम है खुशियों की तलब आप से की है न करेंगे हम आपकी मर्जी पे रजामंद रहेंगे दरकार हमें आप से शबीर का गम है या फात मजहरा तुम्हें बच्चों की कसम है या फात मजहरा या फात मजहरा या फात मजहरा या फात मजहरा मोहम्मद वाल मोहम्मद सलावत ज़ियारत बिस्मिल्लाहिर्रहमानिर्रहीम अस्सलाम वालेकुम या रसूलुल्लाह अस्सलाम वालेकुम या अमीर अल मुमिनीन अस्सलाम वालेकुम या अस्सलाम वालेकुम या फातिमा तल ज़हरा अस्सलाम वालेकुम या खदीज़ तल कुब्रा अस्सलाम वालेकुम या हसन अल मुज़दबा अल्लाम या हुसैन शहीद करबला वालासैन व महमद व जाफ़र अबन महमद व मूसबन जाफ़र वाली अबन मूसा व महमद अबन आली वाली अबन महमद वल हसन अबन आली वल हजत अबन हसन हजरज वसाह मखरज ونا سرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه وارزقه توها وتمتعوا فيها طويلا برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين <تصفيق>